Good evening, Liam. What's been the impact of this court verdict there in PNG tonight? Well, uh, as soon as we left uh, the courthouse, we headed to Government House, the residence of the, residence of the Governor General, because if Sir Michael is to be restored as Prime Minister, he needs to go there and get sworn in by the Governor General. When we got there, there was uh, dozens of heavily armed police uh, blocking off access to the to Government House. We were told in no uncertain terms to get lost. Uh, by some very anxious-looking uh, policemen. Uh, we then went across the road to try and monitor the situation from there, and we were told even to leave there. Right now, we're in a hotel where the Samari camp is based. Uh, they're currently making preparations to head to uh, Government House so that Sir Michael can be sworn in, and we're hoping to get in with them. OK, obviously a very tense situation there this evening. Can you take us through how this political drama has unfolded, starting with how Sir Michael Samare was initially toppled as Prime Minister? Back in August, uh, Sir Michael had already been overseas for some months, undergoing heart surgery in a hospital in Singapore. Uh, it was while he was away that uh, a mass defection of government MPs allowed the then opposition to, to move a motion in Parliament declaring the PM's office vacant. And then they elected Peter O'Neill as his replacement. Now, Sir Michael's supporters went to court arguing that there was never a vacancy. And even if there was, uh, the proper processes weren't followed to replace him. And now, in the majority verdict, the Supreme Court has basically agreed with that. They've said that Sir Michael was not lawfully removed from office. Uh, Peter O'Neill was not lawfully appointed as his successor. Um, and that they've ordered Sir Michael be restored uh, to office uh, forthwith. So where does this leave the country's government? Would Sir Michael Samari have enough support in Parliament to keep the job if, for example, there was a, a vote of no confidence in him? This is uh, the big question. Um, in, this, uh, in that mass defection of government MPs were several members of his own party, uh, several senior members as well. Uh, the government uh, of the now former government, I suppose, of Peter O'Neill enjoyed a very big majority. In Parliament, it's unclear even if Sir Michael is sworn in as Prime Minister whether he'll be able to function in Parliament. OK, Liam Fox in Port Moresby, thanks very much.